I look at people now differently in an airport. I look at, at people in an audience. I look at people when I'm traveling and I'm like, I think everyone's on a mission. They just don't know it. We are now joined by JC Curley, CEO of Pelican Products. Thank you for joining us, JC. How are you doing? Absolutely, man. I just got off the stage here with my good friend Brad Stewart. We did this notion of like, how do you turn moments into momentum? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, the stories that we've been part of contributing in the past, but also just the, the when you look back, you can connect those dots, you know? Yeah. So it was a, a connect the dot moment for us. It was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. We brought in John. John oh. is a huge fan of not only Pelican products, but Gibson and Levi's, pretty much all the companies you've been a CEO. Yeah. Love so, it. So yeah. we're going to let John yeah, take usually I'm behind the camera running sound and everything, but I saw you were, you know, speaking. I saw yeah. Pelican, Gibson, Jeans. Like, oh, yeah. I use all that stuff. So that's cool. Perfect. Very Perfect. cool. So let's talk about Pelican a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So first off, for people who don't know, because unless you, you're carrying around gear, you might not know what Pelican is, but you probably have seen it everywhere. Yeah. Or, you know, so tell people what Pelican is, and then we'll get into, like, what you got coming, because I know there's some yeah. stuff coming. It's interesting what, what you say, you know. After uh, Levi's was an amazing, you know, we talked about, the you know, everything we did there, and then yeah. Gibson was the, the rebuild of that. And then, you know, I joined Pelican, and people were like, Pelican? And then I'm like, you know it. And they go, and they kind of give you that exactly that look. And I yeah. said, you know, the folks at the airport that are definitely cooler than you, they're going somewhere on a mission. They have a case that something is really valuable in there. It could be camera equipment. It could be they're going to an offshore oil rig with tools or they're, in a lot of cases, military, like Navy SEALs, special ops, rangers, going on mission-critical situations to places where they're literally their livelihood depends on their gear being protected. And I said, oh, and by the way, those cases have a few cool stickers, and if yeah. you could meet the people, they would tell, and oh, those things. Oh yeah, I don't. Oh yeah, those Pelican. So, and I've used Pelican cases too. And, and the whole opportunity to take a a brand that's synonymous with protection. Just think of that for yeah. a second. It already. We start where most brands wish they could get to, you know. And we've been synonymous for 50 years almost since 1976 of of, of building to protect to equip for the mission. And we we're not the heroes. The yeah. heroes are the folks that go out and the creators and the and the military folks and the first responders and the particular protectors and the outdoor explorers, we, we basically empower them to accomplish their mission. That's who we are. Yeah. Built to protect, to equip for the mission. Yeah, and I was, and it's amazing. I, yeah, and I was saying my uncle's a photographer. He's retired now, but he's mm -hmm. still got his Pelicans from when he started back yeah. in the day, and they're still using them. I got a crazy story about that. So 1976 is when we started. We have a warranty department in, in Torrance, California, which is where we started. And we still, that's where my office, the headquarters are. So I, I walk out there. I'm going over to another building. This older guy, cool older guy, sitting there in like a bench, like on the side of the warranty department. I'm like, hey, I said, hey, can I help you? Is someone helping you? He goes, he goes, oh, yeah, I just want to, I need to get all work done on this case. And he looks up and he goes, oh, but you're, are, you're, the, J, you're the guy, like the CEO. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's cool, man. What's your name? He goes, he got a little nervous. He goes, I'm Gary. He goes, well, what, what do you need? How can I help you? He goes, well, well, I got this case in the late 70s. And like, imagine that it was one of yeah. the first cases we ever did. And he goes, and I just need to get a casket. I'm like, a casket? Like, the guy's old, but I'm like, yeah. well, what? <laughs> we don't do caskets. He was so, in an awesome way, nervous. He goes, oh, I'm in a gasket. So we do O-rings in <laughs> yep, there. He goes, yep. oh, no, no, I'm in an O-ring. And I thought, like... This guy wants to be buried in a pelican. I'm like, that's about That'd as good as it gets, you know? <laughs> Built yeah. to protect. That's right, so, that's right. But it's been an unbelievable ride, and, and the team there is uh, amazing. And we, you know, we've, we've come a long way in the last 50 years, but a little bit like those moments to momentum, if you think about Built to Protect, and then, you know, what you do and what, first of all, all these folks who are on a mission, I'm like, man, like, I look at people now differently in an airport. I look at, at people in an audience. I look at people when I'm traveling, and I'm like, I think everyone's on a mission. They just don't know it. You, you think about yeah, that for yeah. a second. And I'm like, why can't we not just be built to protect for mission critical? Why can't we enable and empower everyone to be on a mission? So we're going to get into a few cool things with um, travel. 
Yeah. We're doing Pelican Shield, which is a much lighter weight travel collection, backpacks, carry. We're doing a proper Pelican case, four wheel spinners, pull, organized inside. So, and the same person, and I, 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 we haven't met until today, okay. and I could see you in an airport. You're rocking that case, Pelican case. Your personal belongings are in something you stole from your wife or your girlfriend. <laughs> you got a backpack you've had for a few years, yep. and you pretend that it actually does everything you need, but you wish you had a better solution. That's right. Yep. Right? Yep. And, uh, and then I look in the future, and in one year from now, you're going to have Pelican choices. And not only because they're good choices, inside we've got this whole packaging system where we're... we're, we're We've worked so much with the military around this Molly, this modular lightweight load carrying equipment. Why can't we bring that to more people? Think about what NASA did to innovation. Think about the military innovations. Think about first responders, SWAT teams. They all rely on critical mission equipment. Why can't the rest of the world have access to that? So we're gonna launch some really cool stuff next year. In fact, we're gonna launch more new Pelican products next year than the last seven years combined. That's wow. awesome. Yeah, That's really, really cool. cool. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you would mentioned you just got off stage giving mm -hmm. a talk about moments to momentum. Mm -hmm. I usually see, you know, applause come after the yeah. talk. You got multiple applauses during your talk. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal speech. Can you just kind of summarize that? Like, what, how have you built those moments to momentum, maybe at Pelicans or yeah. Levi's Gibson? Yeah, I mean, it's... It's such a simple concept when you think about it. And I think in today's world where things happen so fast, everyone wants to go for the big bang moment or like, oh, how do you get to, how do you get to be an Olympic gold medalist? And, and what people, and, and it's always been proven, like you gotta do thousands and thousands and thousands, but it's all those moments that collectively lead up to creating momentum. And so I did a talk about Levi's, being a 140 year old startup, but then understanding that denim was challenged by other solutions of comfort, casualization, contemporary style, whether it was Lululemon or premium jeans. So really understanding all of those moments and synthesizing them into a course of action. And it easily you could say, oh, well, dismiss Lululemon, that's a fad, not quite. Mm -hmm. And my, my great friend, Brad Stewart, who we've been on a journey for almost 30 years together, I mean, We've seen so many moments teeing up to momentum, and he's, we've gone such different courses, but that's our common denominator. I think we both can see and see these insights. And by the way, we're not geniuses. We're just, I think, insightful, and we learn to ask good questions. But don't just leave the question out there, answered or unanswered. Synthesize it into a vision. So the vision that Levi's was, let's go after Sheriff Closet. I mean, this is a Levi's jacket. We make belts. We, make, we went on to do that and became the leading lifestyle brand again. Gibson Guitars. Okay, we're a guitar company, synonymous with every genre for 130 years. Let's be the 130-year-old startup. Let's put moments to momentum with artists, with the Gibson Garage. Let's tie in, tie in the obvious but create synergy. And one of the starting points with a lot of companies that are struggling is they have what this notion I call inverted synergy, where the whole of Levi's was actually less than the sum of its parts. They invented blue jeans. Gibson basically we're at the forefront of every genre, well then what happened? It had inverted synergy. So one of the visions I have is to, is to, how do you create inspired synergy? And it's taking a series of moments that could otherwise be dismissed, un, undiscussed or avoided, and you, you bring them together and synthesize it into a course of action that starts to create momentum. And when you get momentum, it's powerful. And then you gotta keep it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and you talked about those moments of momentum, we talked about what Pelican's going to do coming in, the, coming in the future here. What do you see as the challenges as you, you start to roll that stuff out? Yeah, well, let, like, let's start with, and I, as you can imagine, I'm an optimist. So let's start, I, I'm literally reading the Wall Street Journal, and I'm coming to this conference. This conference is about reimagining the experience through the lens of, like, independent hotels, of which I'm a customer of those. And I'm reading in the, in the uh, Wall Street Journal an article about the future of travel. And it says people want to go to more extreme places, unknown places. They want to explore. They want to bring fewer things that are more valuable. Mm -hmm. And they want to trust that they can get, you know, the last mile, everything is there. And so I'm like, Pelican, mission, check, valuable, fewer things better, destinations unknown, unchartered. Like this is setting up for us to be a perfect time to really not only just get into the travel category, but take everything we've done and learned about millions of missions 
and set people on their mission. So that's one dimension. But I think some of the challenges are, you know, this notion of, of premium. And I think, and there's this luxury, mm-hmm. right? And for me, Pelican's not a luxury brand. Yeah. It's a premium brand and there's yeah. a difference. And so what I want to make sure of is that people understand if you're in your, you have thousands of dollars of camera equipment and there's this built-in ratio in your head. You're like, I'm going to spend three to $400 to protect three to 4,000. It's a ratio that you probably have and then you trust. And we have unrivaled credibility yeah. and trust with Buy Pelican. one time. But the person that yeah. doesn't know Pelican, why is this $500 and this other plastic case is only 100 And so I think one of our challenges is to take what we've earned over time and reveal it to those, you know, to you, first and foremost, you're our future guy, like the backpack, the four-wheel spinner, the, the Pelican Shield, the, the mod, all of that. But of, of equal importance is how do you create a new fan base that don't know your brand? They don't know that you've done missions. And so that's going to be our challenges. And I really fundamentally believe in 10 years, we're going to look back at Pelican and say, we literally energized and enabled and empowered people that didn't know they were on a mission to go on a mission because of Pelican. And you said something in, in your talk about, you said the phrase, rugged luxury. Yeah. So is that kind of the, the goal it with is. that? Like- and, and again, it's a lot, so many things in life come through personal experience. Yeah. I, uh, we, we have a place in Costa Rica, and uh, my favorite thing about it is the last 30 miles. It's a dirt road. And my kids, we, we, as soon as we hear that dirt road, we don't go, oh, hang on for the bumps and it's dusty and noisy. We know we are literally 30 minutes away from a rugged luxury experience. We carry our boards through the jungle. There's a 200 meter setback. There's no hotels on the beach. And we're like, this is rugged luxury. We, we were part of the local community. Like we, we're now the surf instructor kids are now working the bars and we're at their weddings. And so this notion of rugged luxury is something I sign up for, but I think it's a pelican dynamic as well of, you know, it's, I'm not sure it's, it's, it's like rugged premium. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, and, and what's interesting is, and not to, there's a brand out there that's really popular, a luxury brand starts with the R and ends with Amoa. And, uh, and they're amazing. I mean, their, their heritage and their quality and their build. But I've seen literally people cry when it gets dented mm-hmm. at LAX. Yeah. And they're afraid to take their luggage on a mission. The Pelican rolls off. It falls off. It rolls over. It's got stickers on it. it the Pelican scars tell a story that it's the mission. It's and I love that. that. That's yeah. the rugged premium. Yeah. And if your Pelican case could talk, it would tell really interesting stories about what you've created. Yeah. And you want it to have the scars. Like, as a Pelican owner, you want those. Like, that's like a badge of honor. 100%. So I think, but but you say that. You and I are like, oh, you're my guy. Yeah. Uh, try telling that to someone who doesn't know Pelican, yeah. doesn't know that it's going to get a little scratch. It's not going to break. It's it, You can drop that thing from a helicopter 100 feet. But we've got to condition those that don't know they're on a mission to act like they're on a mission and know that it's okay if your case goes through life like you do. A few battle scars in the, in, on the mission. Yeah, I think right. I'm, ex- I'm super yeah. excited about it. And we're going to do a whole bunch of really cool accessories. Yes, hydration and coolers that we're doing air tags that can Velcro in. So we're really leveraging the mission to not just be like a variation on a Pelican case. If we say equip for the mission, uh, we've got to really equip for it. And we've built this new product pit at Pelican. If you get down there, be my guest. And uh, we've got the Pelican Innovation Lab that didn't exist. And it's connected 50 feet from the, uh, from the factory. So all of this comes together to create moments that now at Pelican, I guarantee you there's momentum there. Absolutely. Awesome. You've been CEO of some big companies, yeah. right? What advice do you have for somebody out there who's aspiring yeah. to be a CEO? Well, first of all, don't try to be one. And it sounds, and, and Brad will tell you this, uh, he's seen me in the early days. He would say like, I don't, we never talked about, hey, I'm going to be the CEO. I kept like failing upwards. And I mean that in a positive way. Like I would try things and a few people would see what we were doing and it was a little different, but it wasn't luck and it wasn't high risk. It was moments yeah. that we could put into momentum. And a couple of things I would say to people is, um, first of all, and this is JC, so um, don't take yourself too serious. If people want to aspire to be a CEO, they think you got to be serious. Don't take yourself too serious but take your role in whatever job you have really serious. Don't confuse the two. 
and I, I saw that through my dad. He was a general in the military. He took his role as a general very seriously, but he was the funnest dad, the most engaging guy, loved music and, you know, life of the party, but come mission time, he was on. So that's one thing. The other one is um, learn to be aggressively patient. I mean, I can tell you, all of us, you guys, a thousand people ask, who here has made a decision that they regretted because they made it too fast? Mm -hmm. Who here knew they had to make a decision and they waited and they delayed and they deflected and they just hoped it would go away and they go, God, I wish I would have done that sooner. Mm -hmm. So crafting the balance at an early stage of your career of where to be aggressive when you have insights and you know what to do, strike it. When you can exercise a little patience and know that that's the preferred course of action, that you're not just knee jerking, balancing being aggressively patient is critical. And the last thing is a little bit what I opened up with there is that none of us can guarantee success. There's no CEO that can guarantee success. But what we should be able to do as leaders and not just CEOs, but at every level, you should be able to guarantee that you can set better conditions for your brand, your business, your team, maybe your family. Um, setting conditions for success is something we all have. And the, the final one, which is the easiest one of all, is everyone thinks you have to go to a school and get a big degree or learn this or know this. And, you, and people get intimidated nowadays. You know why? You think you have to know everything. Everyone has this one common denominator tool that they should absolutely leverage more of is asking the right question. And if you sit with, uh, with Brad Stewart, I, I learn something from him every day. No BS. BS, Brad Stewart, wait a minute. <laughs> um, he, he literally, I, I like telling stories and that. He'll sit there and ask questions and watching how he can get insight from a group of people through the power of simple questions is, is something I would encourage everyone to hone their own personal style of being an active listener and asking the right questions. Well said. Well said. Thank you so much for joining and sitting with, down with us for a few minutes. Absolutely. It was great. And I can't wait to see what's next for Pelican products. Yeah, I'm excited yeah, too. Same, yeah. Build to protect. Let's go on a mission. Let's do it. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Thank you guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Great to have Thanks. you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. We are now joined by Brad Stewart from Caravan Outpost. Thanks for sitting down with us, Brad. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. Uh, we're in a beautiful spot. And the world is pretty good today. And, um, you know, I just coming off stage uh, with my good friend, J.C. Curley, who's got an exciting new role at Pelican and doing some pretty amazing things, talking about moments to momentum and what that means in hospitality. And I feel good. I'm energized. Conferences yeah. like this energize me in a positive way. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So tell us more about Caravan Outpost. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, the, the dirty secret here, I don't know anything about hospitality. Right. And I always look for an unfair advantage in any company I ever start. Been involved in several startups in the uh, action sports business and so on. Sold them to some large companies, Solomon, Adidas, Billabong. And the question I am always searching for is, what, what's my unfair advantage? And, you know, we kind of had this moment in time after 30 years in the sports biz where we thought, you know, we could get into another business. We could enter hospitality. Our unfair advantage would be that we're consumer marketers. We being my wife, Sean and I, right. we're consumer marketers. She's a designer working for Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, several other uh, brands and apparel designer. Wow. And we kind of thought, well, we're sitting in all these meetings and we're hearing people that were saying, okay, so now back to the product we made for you. What was it like? Well, you know, I, I wore it in this one bar. Man, it was in Spain. And I met this guy, and he had this girl with him, and she was kind of like this, and he was kind of like that. And then th they start to go through these places they've been. And we arrived at a very simple place about 15 years ago. What people own will be less important to them in the future than where they've been. And we should immediately recalibrate because we make stuff. <laughs> right. And nobody needs stuff, especially if you look at the trends in the uh, environment and where everything is yeah. going. I mean, we we were in the plastic world, Gore-Tex, and, you know, all these things are not sustainable. Yeah. Um, so we said, hang on, let's retool for the future. We, we uh, family mantra is how do we future proof what we do? Yeah. We thought, great, let, let's design a place first and then see if we can create products out of that. So caravan outpost that's our place let's inspire people we're going to spend a little bit of money and the house rule is nobody gets to get their cancellation in college because we've lost all their money on right. mom and dad's dumb 
you know, dumb idea. <laughs> and, uh, and we thought this isn't, maybe this will work, maybe not. The only inclination we had it would, that it would work, we built it ourselves. It was important to me to build it as a living sculpture. Our unfair advantage versus, you know, people who've been in glamping and all of those things, we're artists. We're not yeah. hoteliers. We built the place. That 50-foot palm tree, I put it in. How'd you do that? I learned how to drive an excavator. Right. How'd you learn how to drive an excavator? By renting one and driving it a bunch of times <laughs> and nearly killing everybody. Yeah. Okay, and eventually I got pretty good, and now I can excavate. Who knew? And so that was really the genesis, you know, for the idea. And, and as I said, the only the only way I thought this might work is one day we're working on it, covered in mud, literally putting the sewer system in. I see this lady looking over the fence, and I think, oh no, the city is here. Do we have our permit display properly? Da, da, da. You know, do everybody got OSHA whatever they need on? I look at the lady, and I think she looks a little familiar to me. I go up to the fence. I say, hey, can I help you? And she says, um, no, I'm just looking. I said, all right. Anybody ever told you you look like Christy Brinkley? Yeah, a lot of people do because I'm, I am. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> hey, how did you hear about this? She said, I was at some uh, studio and I had to come up to Ojai today and somebody mentioned there were these people like building these amazing palm trees and they had some airstreams and a big fire at night. And I just thought I'd come by and see what it was. And that's really when it hit for me. I thought we might have something here. And then very quickly, our clientele developed into a celebrity heavy uh, component. <laughs> and and that, that really kicked us off, actually. Wow. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. And you just got off the stage talking about moments yeah. to momentum. Yeah. How have you built moments and built momentum on that at Caravan Outpost? <laughs> um, let me talk about a couple. Yeah. Okay. A girl named Alicia rides her motorcycle down, checks in. Everybody's sitting around the fire pit talking to Alicia. Somebody's talking about, yeah, I went to this concert here, here, and here. And Alicia says, yeah, I was, I was in Turkey once. And like, they literally had to take me off stage. Everybody's like, what's Alicia talking about off stage? All of a sudden it occurs to everybody, Alicia is pink. And pink is here at the outpost with her husband, Corey, who's an old buddy. No way. <laughs> you know, wow. like, they come into our lobby. Is, that pink? is Alicia pink? I'm like, I'm sorry, we don't disclose any guest information. You can believe whatever you want. Her hair looks similar. I don't know, you know. And we've had a bunch of little moments like that that have translated into pink jumping on Instagram at midnight, putting something out on Instagram. Hey, I'm at Caravan Outpost. I met a bunch of incredible people around the fire pit. Really cool. We had another moment where a very famous uh, musician came. We had some guitars around our fire pit. He said uh, he was there with a group of people. Nobody knew who he was. Do you mind if I play a little bit? Yeah, sure. Bring, bring, play a little bit. <laughs> you're pretty good, man. You know, some lady. You're, you're really, really pretty good. It was a famous musician. She says, um, you mind playing a song? He's like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I do know this one song on the radio. It's his song. <laughs> Plays this massive hit song. And the lady's like, you could work in any bar. In LA. <laughs> this great. individual is, I, and I'm leaving him nameless because he comes a lot. And yeah. I, I, I want to be respectful of that. This, this individual fills stadiums. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny. He sat there, played oh. four or five songs. And so we've taken little moments like that and we've tried to let our guests publicize them. I believe marketing is what you do when you run out of good ideas. Yeah. So we always try to have good ideas. And when we catch ourselves marketing, stop consumers are too smart everybody can get all of the information on anything do not market create what's real give people something true to hang on to that's a moment and that's that's how you grow it and how you get there incredible yeah that's great so one of the things we're, we're trying to dive deeper in especially for next year and maybe some things that you've come out of what are some challenges that you think are coming up or maybe some challenges that Ooh. you've made it through in this industry and being independent my worst enemy in business is my own limitations. And I regularly ask my wife, who's my business and life partner, my staff, I say to them, will you please hold me accountable for not thinking too small? What? Please hold me accountable. When you hear me diving in, thinking small, not projecting the vision of what we're trying to do to you, uh, to the business with you, hold me accountable. So being careful not to think too small we launched a little bit like JC went into, you know, when COVID hit, JC pivoted and he realized, hey, 
we actually don't make guitars. We, we make a way for people to relate to each other. It's called music. We make a sound. And people like that sound, and they like the artists who use that sound to communicate. And so um, what I'm always searching for, the world is uncertain. You never know what your bookings are. You know, COVID has radically shortened the timeline. We would sell out a year in advance. Now we sell out four days in advance, you know, and you're kind of like, ooh, okay, yeah, ooh, we did it again, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, uh, with all of that uncertainty, you know, what we look for is we just, you know, we try to say to people, is, is there a way uh, we can build 51% of the experience for you and whatever that 49% that you built to get the rest of the way across our brand, you did that. It was meaningful and true to you. And you had that moment, you know, and we try to, I, I don't want to say we try to engineer moments, but we try to be a stage. One of our philosophies is we, a, we actually don't run a hotel. We kind of run a place where you can experience things. We think about it a lot like a movie set. Very early on, The Bachelor came to us and said, you mind if we start shooting a couple episodes here? We said, sure, go ahead. Shot some episodes of The Bachelor. I, I still have nightmares, but... Um, <laughs> But it was fantastic, and actually my favorite, if I can digress for a minute. Sure. Yeah. The guy who won chose his partner on the show and everything. A few weeks after he stayed with us, Texas, hey, me and blank would like to come up and stay. I'm like, the show is still on the air. I know who won. Let's get in the plane and go to Vegas <laughs> <laughs> and place a $5 million bet on who I know. <laughs> <laughs> But again, you know, a little moment. And then yeah. one minute later, I get a text from him. Oh, my God, I just broke my NDA. Please delete, delete, <laughs> delete, 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 delete. You know? yeah. I'm like, all right, I'll delete that, you know. And, uh, but, yeah. you know, I, I just think this general yeah. environment of uncertainty, you can kind of lean in or lean out. Um, I do believe what I said on stage, yeah. how you arrive is critical to, to the equation. Uh, you know, it's the old thing. You can't change what happens to you, but you can change how yeah. you see it. Or, or how you perceive it. So we're kind of in the weeds on a lot of basic stuff like that. We do try to maintain absent of deep knowledge about hospitality and remain experts in delivering something to people that is meaningful. Right. And um, that's a big part of, uh, of how, you know, we're trying to future-proof what we do, frankly. That's great. Yeah. It's incredible. Now, Looking ahead to 2025 again, instead of challenges, what type of trends are you seeing that might be coming in the next couple months? Whew, I wish I knew all of the answers to that. I can tell you a few things that I see. Um, flexibility mm -hmm. in how you think about your physical space, mm -hmm. the emotional space of customers, and how you bring them into the environment is key. Right. We talk about our place now again we don't actually use the word hotel that much um we talk about flexible spaces we allow people to participate in customizing so rather than when you come here we've anticipated your needs mm -hmm. i don't believe in that as a consumer marketer I, I, th that breaks down for me on many many places right. i don't believe in a customer journey i i believe there is an attribution model where the reasons that people do things, buy things, go places, and so on, is fed by this constellation of things, ranging from Aunt Sally said we should never go there, and I can't stand Aunt Sally, so I bet you it's the <laughs> coolest thing we've ever done. Or, hey, honey, uh, last week uh, you said you didn't like my shirt, and I want to go to this little town and buy a new shirt at this little shop, and I found this cute little hotel. Or, hey, you remember that food we've never eaten? You know, I, I was at dinner with somebody the other day. They are the largest shipping family in Greece. They came to Ojai. We participate peripherally in a couple of restaurants in Ojai called Rory's Place and Rory's Other Place. Great write-ups, New York Times, uh, Sunset, everywhere. And they said, yeah, I really, I really wanted to come here and have this meeting with you um, because I hear in Santa Barbara that I can uh, get good conch locally here. And being a hotel guy, you know, um, I'm, I'm always looking for investors and ways to expand. And I thought, it's amazing that this guy is here because of like this bivalve. Right. You know, who would have who would have ever guessed that? So I think you have to be highly flexible 
and, and you can't have too fixed of a concept of your brand in order to succeed. So we're trying to leverage that a little bit. Concrete term, uh, things happening. Everybody loves great food. The food experience, I think, is really going to uh, center yeah. what's happening. One of our old philosophies is look for cities to grow that have the three W's, wine, women, and weed. <laughs> Um, you, got simple, our, you got our attention. Simple, <laughs> simple formula. Yeah. We created a customer archetype called the Gino, and everybody's like, "What's a Gino?" We're like, "It's girls' night out. It's a major thing. We book Genos. All of our people in the company are like, "Hey, man, we got a giant Gino group coming in. Great. They're high end. They dress great. They buy our five hundred dollar dresses. They love meeting Alicia, who they discovered was pink. Yeah. That's it. We're all in." You know, even to the point where our customers, yeah. you know, will call me now for repeats. Hey, Brad, it's Sheila. We got our Gina group, all, our Gino group all set up. Great. Uh -huh. Come on down. You know, so, we're, we're, yeah. you know, we're, we're almost by luck. You know, frankly, we've succeeded because we really don't know a lot. But I think those kind of those those kind of uh, traveling with friends in fashion, you see twinning as yeah. a, you know, maybe the, one of the number one trends. I actually think there's something happening in travel on that where people kind of want to duplicate experiences and yeah. so on. And so we're looking a lot to that. We don't talk about how do we deliver luxury or any of that. To us, luxury is a behavior. It's right. not a product. So when I sit in the meetings here and I hear luxury is this, this, and this, and this, I think probably it is for them. At our place, luxury, because our guests can stay anywhere. They can afford anything. Luxury for them is hi, I was in the Star Wars franchise as the girl holding the lightsaber. I'd like to run around with all my friends from high school in our pajamas. Could we just close your place down for three days and run around in our pajamas? Yeah. Okay, we're going to park a big black car there. We're going to put a security guard right here. Can you guys just shut it down? Yes. We will wheel the sign away. Nobody's going to come in. Store is closed. Have fun. Walk around in your pajamas. Incredible. Great. So, Incredible. Brad, great. thank you so much for sitting down with us. This yeah, was an awesome guys. conversation. Yeah. Great talk. Great conversation. Loved it. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Thanks you so guys. much. Thank Loved you it. so thank much. Thank you so yeah, much. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. You made it to the end of The Modern Hotelier. Thanks for listening. The Modern Hotelier is produced by Make More Media. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're listening on YouTube or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. If you know a guest or sponsor that would be a good fit, feel free to email us at hello at themodernhotelier.com. If you'd like to get some Modern Hotelier merch, click the merch button on modernhotelier.com or click the link below. Thanks and have a great day.